everyone my name is Evie Lupine welcome back to my channel and today I have another video for you all today we are doing another reaction video now you all really seem to love the last one of these that I did where I looked at Anthony Padilla interviewing professional dominatrixes and while I was watching that I kept thinking you know what it would be really awesome if he interviewed lifestyle BDSM people or pet players or polyamorous people because I happen to be a polyamorous people. I mean, all those are really <laughs> part of who I am, but especially the poly part. And it looks like the world has answered my request because a couple weeks ago over on Anthony's community tab on YouTube, which is where he kind of lets people know what videos he's going to be doing, he said, if I were to spend a day with Thrupples, fully functional three-person romantic relationships, what kinds of questions would you like to see me ask? And uh, <laughs> there's a GIF attached to it, which is, I think, a guy in slacks in between two women's legs with high heels on and you know i like anthony's videos i trust him generally to look on the positive side kind of meet people where they are at and let them tell their stories and it's interesting so the world of polyamory is kind of a confusing one because it's like is there a difference between poly and ethical non-monogamy more generally. Do we call it being open? Is that different from poly, thruples, triads? What's the difference between having a triad or a thruple and a threesome? Like there's a lot of, I think, misunderstanding and misuse of terminology maybe even between different things and not knowing how things are separate from each other. But I think with this one, it does sound like he is going for that direction of actual relationships and not people that have like a third person they hook up with sometimes, which I think is how some people perceive it. And of course, very much like with BDSM, the representation we have of Polly in most of media is like truly documentaries with the most like out there titles you've ever heard they're like my girlfriend is having my wife and i's baby like just the things that make traditional monogamous people could just go like wait what like what, what what's happening and i can't remember the name of the channel but there's one channel that's really well known for having a setup where it's different people from different sides of an argument like come together i think it's called like middle ground or something i don't know if that's the channel or the thing they do, the format, but they have like, for example, like pro-choice and pro-life people come together and see if they can agree. Another format they do is they also have like, does everyone of the same opinion or same label like agree on all things? So they had like vegans, they've had poly people, they have had asexuals, like they've had a pretty broad spectrum. And that's really what you get is like that kind of format of video or like kind of exploitative documentaries. So I know I've been rambling for a while. I haven't watched this video yet. It just came out like I think right around Thanksgiving. So hey, you know, if you wanna tell your family your poly for Thanksgiving, I guess that's a way to do it. And I really actually like the thumbnail for this because it's actually what it looks to be is three guys in a thruple together because, you know, again, going back to that gif that was in the post, the stereotype is it's a guy with like a mini harem of two women he's somehow convinced to be okay with you know him dating both of them you know like that's the stereotype here so already with the thumbnail i'm feeling really good about this and i'm just gonna watch it and share my thoughts as we go along so let's get into it my name is anthony padilla and today i'll be spending a day with thruples to uncover the truth about three-person romantic relationships by the end of this video we'll find out how these thruples deal with natural feelings of jealousy if they ever engage in two-person intimacy or if it's always a three-person thing and how the thruple in this video managed to get married despite three-way marriages being deemed completely illegal in the united states are these thruples thriving despite societal pressures to conform? Or are they merely dysfunctional relationships destined for heartbreak and despair?
Hello, Dallas, Cassie, and Matt. Hi. Mark, David, uh -oh. and Ray. How long have you been a throuple? Dallas and I got together in 2013, and all three of us got together at the end of 2015. Us together, we've been together for five years, but overall, as a throuple, throuple, we've been together, together two years. years. It's a couple, but with three. Another word for it could also be a triad. Like something that means three in it. You uh, know, yeah. Like, yeah. Trisexual, tri yeah, tricycle. Yeah, trisexual. What do you think is the biggest pro of having a three-person relationship? There'll never be a time where one of us is gonna be alone. Having somebody to talk to. Like, there's never a time where it's like, oh, I'm too busy right now. I can always talk to one of them. And financial support too, as well. I mean, yeah. three people with rent is um, a little bit easier. Three incomes in one bank account sounds good to me. Lots of zeros. We're hoping. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I know we're like a minute and a half into this. I have to talk about this. So there is again, a stereotype I think sometimes that happens of poly people where it's either like oh well you're doing it because you want an excuse to sleep around and you want to have as many sexual partners as possible and the other stereotype that is a little bit like less common but is still out there is that it's like using multiple people to like plug a hole you have in yourself because you need that much extra validation and support from others and I I guess you know being somebody that's poly like I don't one of my personal motivations is not like oh I'll never be alone like I'm an introvert I like being left alone like I like having many people in my life but I don't necessarily want to be talking to all of them all the time and I worry a little bit that that kind of approach of like oh well I, I never am alone I never have to sit by myself and think about my thoughts like that could kind of leave a negative impression but that is still what a lot of people like like if you're really extroverted I could see how like always having someone that has time for you is really reassuring and really comforting but I think one of the downfalls is that can go in a negative direction if you're somebody that has maybe some like attachment issues perhaps where like you feel like insecure unless someone has time for you and this is the thing with this actually that made me want to pause it is even in a throuple even in a, some kind of quad polycule sort of world like no matter how many partners you have at the end of the day it doesn't necessarily mean that everyone has time for you other people have other partners. Well, not really in a, well, they'll talk about that, I guess, but like some triads are closed where it's just the three people. And I prefer the term triad personally. I think thruple, I don't know. It just, it doesn't roll off the tongue as easily for me. But in a triad, you know, it might be closed. You could have an open triad where the three partners are like committed and then you have like maybe other people that are more casual or are more like friends with benefits, you know? So that could also be a variation there, but even when you have multiple partners, like they could have exams and medical stuff and kids and other partners and who knows what else, and you could still be left alone and you could still have times when people aren't available for you. And I think there can be that undue pressure of like, well, one partner isn't available for me. So now you have to be available for me or only getting attention when the other party isn't available. Like it can go in some pretty, I think, unhealthy directions. And I think that's important to be aware of, even when I think it is like a positive intention at other times, you know, I'm going to rant about stuff like that a lot in this, I feel like, because I don't get a lot of opportunities here to talk about poly and relationship stuff. So I apologize if I pause a lot during this, but I hope that it's informative in some way. Let's continue. Were you always interested in each other? We started to date other guys after being together for two, two years. years. Finally, after dating a few of them, we were able to bring in and find Ray, and it's been working out since then. Cassie and I were together first, just as you know, a, a couple. I had actually known Matt because he was basically Cassie's ex flame from when they were teenagers. I didn't like that. I always had feelings for Matt. Seeing him again, she tried to get me away. We decided to hang out again, and by some miracle, Dallas started to like Matt when they would hang out as friends. Were you always interested in being in a three-person relationship. I brought up the idea to David. Okay, honestly, I was scared because you're the one telling you like, hey, I want to love somebody else. Am I going to lose my significant other? Those thoughts that 
cross your mind, but you even told me if it don't work, I'm not leaving you. We're gonna try it out, see what happens. I knew nothing about polyamory. Growing up, it was not on my radar. That on I the other hand. hand. Yeah, <laughs> I had like more of a definition of what it was. And that principle really resonated with me. Like I always had feelings for multiple people and I was always so confused by it. So I think that's also something I wanna talk about, which is there is, I think very, little awareness of poly as compared to things like BDSM, at least when you are like learning who you are and the people you're attracted to. Like you're in that, when you're in that phase of being a teenager and you're figuring out your identity or like younger adulthood, maybe like 18, 19, 20, so on. I knew what BDSM kind of was from a, not like a young age, but like high school, teenage years, right? There was the big craze of like a lot of fan fiction sites. There was Tumblr. There was, of course, I think Fifty Shades of Grey came out when I was a little bit older, but like it was something that people were aware of. It was in jokes on TV. It was referenced in like community even. Like it was out there. People knew about BDSM. Whether or not BDSM was a real thing <laughs> that people actually did was another question. I always thought it was like a fantasy thing, but no one actually did it in real life. <laughs> I learned better than that eventually. But with Polly, like that was not on the radar of possibilities. It was not an option. Like it is so taught in so many cultures that it is one person one person only eventually, right? Maybe you date around, maybe you have a little bit of a wild phase in college, but ultimately it's one person to one person and that's how life is. And for some people, they learn about poly and they discover, hey, this is like a practical thing that I think will be helpful for my life and this sounds good and I'll try it. Other people are very naturally motivated, I think towards polyamory. And like the one guy described, like you kind of knew that you wanted to be with multiple people. You had the capacity to be with multiple people. But in society, that's like not an option. If you do that, you're like a cheater, you are maybe a playboy, something like that. And it's, again, not talked about. And I think I've seen more and more, there is a conversation around it, right? There's like Cosmopolitan Magazine, I think has done things featuring polyamory before. Obviously, Anthony is talking about it here in some form but it's just not talked about. And I think it's interesting as well because we're kind of seeing throuples and triads and by extension poly being presented as like couples opening up and then adding in another person, which is an option, right? But I think a lot of poly, a lot of triads, like actual like equilateral three person relationships are not super common in polyamory in open relationships in general because it's very hard to find three people that all like each other equally you know and maybe we'll talk about that because i think that's a really big struggle and for the most part it tends to be like a confusing web of like different relationship styles with multiple people that have partners of partners that maybe you share maybe you don't and it just like spreads out a little bit more. So it's not super common, but it is an option and it's hard to develop it. And it, I think it's what a lot of people gravitate towards getting into open relationships is this like triad style because it's the most like being in a regular couple scenario. It's like couple plus one. And that's, I think kind of how they're talking about it here. It doesn't have to be that way. That's not all poly. That's not even all triads even. And um, yeah, anyways, continuing on. Do you remember the moment when you decided to make it a three-person thing? He wound up coming with Dawson and I around town and it was very convenient. It was kind of like a built-in first date. So did you feel guilty about feeling those feelings for Matt considering Dallas, you and Dallas yeah, had not spoken? I, I did. I was worried that Dallas and I were gonna get to the end of the night. What's the vibe here? But what actually happened was Dallas pulled me into the kitchen and she's like, they could go down with Matt. Cassie and I had talked about maybe being intimate with another person, having 
you know, just a fling of some kind. When Dallas said that to me, I wasn't even surprised. I was relieved because I had that guilt of like, what is going on here? But at that point, I trusted Dallas. I was like, if Dallas is saying that, then she's picking up on something. When we met Ray, it just clicked. It was a shock for me. Like, I literally, like I said, we never flirted. We said it, we're like, okay, come over Saturday. Sunday, we'll go to Disneyland. And did you know that they were looking to become a throuple at that point or interested? No, I didn't know. Yeah. Like, it was just more of a I was like, damn, I'm over here third wheel, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah. And that's when they're like, okay, we like you. They opened my mind about polyamory. So one thing I want to note here really quickly is when you know you want a triad, when you know you want a three-person relationship, it is really important to be honest and upfront about that being what you want. Discovering it kind of along the process I think is different, but a lot of people online especially, have very negative experiences of people looking for a third and not telling the other parties that's what's going on. There's literally an entire Chris Fleming song about it. If you guys haven't seen it, it's hilarious. I'll put it down below. But, you know, a lot of people, for example, will have the woman in the couple go on a lesbian dating app pretend to be a single gal and then after a conversation goes along it'll be like oh well you know what we can only do this if my boyfriend is involved and that's just like really distasteful and I think especially in any kind of open relationship you have to be honest and upfront because it doesn't work when there is that mistrust or lies or deception from the very beginning so yeah just keep that in mind with Really anything, honesty is always important, but especially here. Was there a moment when one of you proposed the idea and made it official? But this time, you know, we had been like hanging out in the talking space, sleeping together, and he was teaching us all about polyamory. He hadn't yet decided what we wanted to do with our relationship. And me and Dallas <laughs> have decided, are like, you are yeah. not sleeping in our bed unless you tell us what is going on right. here. We had the infamous what are we conversation yes. in which we said like, are we a polyamorous triad? And that's that he wanted that, Dallas said she wanted that. And I said, well, I wouldn't be bringing this up if I didn't want it, so um... let's shake on it. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta hear this. You shook on it. Yeah, we're all, we're all laying on the ground. We're holding hands together. We're like, okay, all right. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. They sat me down. And then that's when they told me like, hey, we like you. And I was like, okay, I like you guys too. You guys are pretty cool. <laughs> Just yeah. as friends. No, like no, that. but we're You're like, chill. <laughs> they both told me like, we usually date guys. I was like, okay, so you like me, like me. You're cool with this and you're cool with this? I was like, wait, both of you? Like, yeah, okay. I was like, Let's just do it. Really? How much time? How much thought did you give it before you said cool? I don't really think he gave it too much thought. <laughs> I think yeah. he's all... You're like, shit, give me another X hat. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the number one question that you guys must get is how do you deal with jealousy? It did at times make me jealous. It's true. I was comparing my now new relationship with Matt to one where they already had history. Comparison is the thief of joy. Anytime I would start to compare mine and Cassie's connection to mine and Matt's, it always would just steal me from the moment. Mm. It steal me from any happiness that was there. Really, jealousy at its core is like a human issue. It's mm. not a relationship issue. It is deeply an insecurity. When we feel jealousy, we pause and we say, what need isn't being met? What fear do I have? What piece of work do I need to do? And then it's a lot of radical acceptance. I think of just yeah. like, I'm gonna be uncomfortable sometimes. I'm gonna feel jealous yeah. sometimes. Yeah. For me, it always comes back to like a lack mindset of like, oh, I'm not getting enough attention right now. Okay, how can I get that attention? Or how can I give that attention to myself mm. rather than trying to constantly seek it from others? For me, it's feeling inadequate. Well, I'm jealous. Nobody's having, nobody's having fun with me. So I really like how that first triad talks about jealousy. I was really nervous about this part of the video because I was like, uh, like my other experiences with poly people on the internet talking about poly, the subject of jealousy turns into this like weird contortion of like not wanting to say that you actually experience jealousy and saying like, oh, well, like jealousy isn't productive. It's not like a good emotion, but like, I don't have jealousy, right? And they were really honest, I think about that experience of that comparison, that comparison being the thief of joy. That's a really common phrase. And I think looking at it and being directly like, hey, like what's going on here? What are the fears? What do I need? How can I meet those needs for myself versus like maybe seeking it from someone else first. I think that is all a really, really healthy approach. Like I don't think 
you should go through the experience of jealousy with like, this isn't happening, this isn't real, this is a bad feeling and I shouldn't feel bad feelings. Like you have to first accept that emotion so you can analyze it and work through it. I think that's like really, really good advice. So let's see what the other throuple has to say. Yeah, I see jealousy as a disease. It makes you really unhappy. He leaving me for him, in other words, or for somebody else. That was more of the internal that I was just like, kind of my insecurity sticking in like, oh my God, what if this guy's better than me? Or what if he likes him more? So it was a lot of that comparison. Yes. And that's where I was just like, wait, why am I going to compare myself to another individual? Because at the end of the day, we're both different. Mm. He might love me for one. I have, and he's gonna love him for what he has. And I'm gonna love that other guy for what he doesn't have. I was obsessive, I was a jealous type, was fine as mine. But at the same time, being with them is like, you know what? It's not healthy being like that. It's on security. Mm -hmm. You gotta be secure with yourself. And that's something that I dealt with, with my past relationships. I'm the emotional type. I'll keep everything aside. And they're the type of like, talk to me, what's wrong? They taught you to communicate and deal with your emotions you need communication like you need to be able to understand your partner or partners people often say that most relationships have kind of a power dynamic where there's one person that's more dominant than the other is there any kind of hierarchy in your throuple we all have a voice here so it's like if one of us doesn't like it then we all have to speak about it let's say you want to send and i want to send the next day but he wants to go out we're like compromise compromise mm -hmm. like you know what no, not, not, to, not this not weekend. To, yeah. Whatever you do in a monogamous relationship, you do the same in a polyamorous mm -hmm. relationship. It's just adding an additional person. There's not hierarchy, but you can tell who talks the most. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Cassie is our spokeswoman. Most is, of the that's why you're in the middle. You're the leader of the pack. People will put a you know, stereotype yeah. and archetype over us and be like, oh, someone's the ring leader. Someone, well, she wears the pants. What, so. She wears the pants. One of the people is more, is more involved or more interested. That's just not the case. Do you think communication is easier or more difficult? It, it's yes. like almost like a voice of, of reasoning, but it helps having that third person because they are able to see both points of view and let us know like, hey, no, you're doing this They can wrong. kind of be a mediator. Yes, to sit there and think like, okay, wait a minute, if he's telling me I'm wrong and he's telling me I'm wrong, then obviously I'm wrong, <laughs> you know? It's Do you still crave one-on-one -on -one time? Oh, yeah, totally. totally. We all sleep together in the same bed. We go on dates together a lot, but most of the time I go on a date just with Dallas or I'll go on a date just with Matt. We live together, we have dinner together, we have breakfast together. We, have, we are a family that does most of our things together, but a lot of those like intimate times where you would say, I wouldn't want to share my partner. That's a one-on-one -on -one moment I want to have. We still have all of those same one-on-one -on -one moments with each yeah. other. <laughs> so what actually came to mind for me here is, the middle ground or whatever channel that is that did the video on do all polyamorous people feel the same thing or think the same things they had a thruple on there where they literally all three kissed together at the same time it was like a pyramid of kissing and they did everything together as a unit sleeping in the same bed going on dates all of that was pretty much together as a three-person unit as opposed to one triad relationship and then multiple two people relationships all fitting together and i think one of the analogies that works really well for polly is thinking about like a family unit with children right because if you are in a family unit with more than one child it's not that one child is loved more than another you know in a healthy family dynamic anyways and it's not that a family should spend all their time with just the two kids together all as like one unit you also have to have that individual bonding time between individual parents and individual children to make that whole unit more cohesive and healthier and make sure everyone is getting the attention and love that they need and deserve and i think with a thruple you also generally need to do that some people are obviously going to be like yes everything together equally all the time i think having that as the standard is wildly unrealistic and does leave that room for not feeling like an individual in that triad scenario. So I think having that separate time where you are both together because you live together and you again cook dinner, you are sharing a bed, all that stuff, but also having that separate one-on-one -on -one time I think is a really really good model to follow for most people and I like that they talked about doing that. So let's hear what the other thruple has to say next. Do you still go on two-person dates? No. No. We're always together. We all work on becoming one. You are a unit. 
as many couples because we never leave anybody left out and if at any point we were to i know that it would feel very uncomfortable it just anything that we do it's always together okay so <laughs> that's kind of what i thought they didn't really go into any like level of detail but you know having that like oh we're never apart we're we're always together as a unit and if we weren't together as a unit we would be uncomfortable with that and i think that's like a valid feeling. I think obviously people will feel whatever they feel. Again, I do want to kind of caution as someone that is an educator, someone that is doing this for educational purposes, that's why we're watching this. Again, I don't think having a scenario where the only time you ever spend together is together as like a three person unit, like I don't think that's ultimately going to end up being healthy in the long term because oftentimes the source for doing that is running away from those uncomfortable feelings of like comparison and being left out and eventually at some point in your life you're going to be forced into a scenario when you're going to have to be separate be it for medical reasons be it for family reasons whatever it is like you are going to have to deal with being separate in like a two person unit at some point and never having practice with that, never being able to sit with that, never being able to feel comfortable in that to some degree or at least feel more comfortable. Like I feel like that again, it's just like not something I want to recommend as like this is a perfectly healthy thing to do that will never ever cause problems. So you've got to sit and confront those uncomfortable feelings sometimes to be able to work through them and have a better relationship. But moving on because we're going to be talking about in the bedroom. Oh yes. Do you guys get a lot of questions about how things operate in the bedroom. They always <laughs> like to know, how do you guys sleep? We are finally answering the question once and for all, how does the thruple machine work in the bedroom? We have a queen size bed. A lot of people find it so shocking. It's never been an issue yeah. for us. He likes the edge of the bed. He I like the wall. He likes the wall. <laughs> It's safe. You're like you're in a cave. So you got I'm the cold like wall there. Everywhere. You get a little hot, touch the wall. <laughs> That's what I do. So my biggest takeaway from all this is that my theory that you guys actually slept in a, a twin size bed all uh, stacked on top of each other. Oh my God. That's, that, that theory I should just throw out the window. We don't sandwich. <laughs> do two of you ever engage sexually when one is not in the mood or is it always a three person thing? We have less threesomes than we do anything else. Mm -hmm. The thing that we always feel so sad to tell everyone is that we're not really that interesting. We're There's actually, no kink thing happening. We're not a sex circus. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> not saying I'm disappointed, but I'm definitely not excited about that. We have a wonderful sex life, I'm not yeah. gonna lie. But I would say it's pretty normal. It's mechanically usually just two people having sex because that's easier. Threesomes are very difficult. It's a lot of work. People who ask us if we have threesomes all the time, I've never had a threesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you are going to bed, it's amazing if two people are on the same day. If one of us isn't in the mood, that frees up somebody who's available for the other person. Right. So it does right. turn it into more sex, but not more group sex. It's three always person. a three person, honestly. Yeah. One thing is because we do OnlyFans, and sometimes we have to like do the OnlyFans, and then we have to have time for ourselves as well, you know? And he does a lot of the recording. Now that he became a part of the content that I make, now it's like we end up making content together. So for me, it's like I have to train myself to like be in the mood for, for work and also be in the mood for when it comes to alone time. And when we do these videos, a lot of those videos, it's me and him. So that's the time that I feel that is our time to have alone time where he's basically watching because he's recording. So if there is a two person moment, the other one's probably peeking through a camera. What you call a voyeur. A voyeur. <laughs> Are there awkward situations where it's like, ah, you know what, this is better off just a two-person thing. I'm gonna go sit on the couch, eat ratatouille while watching ratatouille. That's not like a good night to me. I'm yeah. There's been plenty of times where, you know, they, they start having an intimate moment and I'm just like, okay, I'll see myself out. <laughs> <laughs> I got stuck you, okay. And you know, that's what we want. Okay, so. I think this is again so important to talk about. I love that they're just like, we don't really have threesomes, like we're not kinky, like we're just like people that have individual sex with each other and when we're both like all feeling the magic, sometimes a threesome happens. Like I think that's very realistic. We love to see the realism and I think a lot of people have this misconception. There is a little bit of truth to it and I'll talk about that. But like a lot of people think, oh, well like if you're in a triad that's like 
kinky, that's like you're having a lot of threesomes, you're in some kind of power dynamic sort of a deal. And that's really not it. Like the majority of polyamorous people are just vanilla, baseline, average sexuality humans that just happen to want to be in relationships with multiple people. And I think there's a conflation between having a capacity to have relationships with multiple parties and deviancy, i.e. being into kink. And sometimes there can be a connection. A lot of people in the BDSM scene are poly or open in some fashion, but not everyone that is poly is kinky. I would say in my experience, and this totally depends on where you live, it's maybe like, I don't know, 10% of people, 15% of people, I try to date primarily with open relationships and poly in mind because that's like the standard baseline of like you have to be okay with this and then BDSM added in after that and adding in the BDSM after like eliminates a lot of potential people even if they are already poly, right? And I love having that sense of like even when you are in a throuple, you know, she mentioned sometimes they get into it and I just like am not and I just walk away and leave. I think that is a great thing to do. Like I think people maybe could get the feeling that they have to always be willing to participate and feel pressured to do that and you don't have to. Like if you're not in the mood, you're not in the mood, remove yourself and you're always gonna have time later, right? Like there's always more time for sex. So yeah, I love that. Did you all mutually decide to get married or did one of you pop the question to two of you? I think we all mutually decided to get married because yeah. we all, I think, had that dream. You know, yeah. we had talked about it in high school conversation, like, ooh, maybe we'll get married. And then we all decided that we should plan a trip as our engagement trip. Matt proposed to me, I proposed to Doss, Doss proposed to me. Um, and then we asked each other just like as a whole, you know, do we want to get married? Do we want to be with each other? And of course we said yes. Can you describe or break down what the wedding was like? We didn't know if um, our venue was going to dislike us because we were polyamorous. Yeah, that was a big concern. Yeah, mm. we ended up not even disclosing that we were three people having a ceremony because of course it's, it's not legal in any way, but we still had a, you know, a ceremony for ourselves mm. and we waited until um, our rehearsal when we had to give them our, our list of all the people that will be walking down the aisle and I have to go to the, the coordinator and be like, so what you don't know is that there's going to be three of us walking down the aisle. <laughs> you don't ask any questions, it's really gonna be fine. So you don't have legal documents, it's not legal. No. It's actually illegal? It's actually illegal. Like all three of us are not supposed to be married. <laughs> Hey, hey, people, uh, hundreds of thousands of you watching right now, <laughs> let's just keep this secret between us, okay? Let's be real cool about some stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Do you feel like it's risky talking about it here so publicly? It, it is some semblance of risk, but if we can help some people um, feel more comfortable with who they are and who mm. they love, I mean, that's the name of the game. So that is really interesting. So it sounds like what happened is they had a social ceremony celebrating the marriage, but I don't know if they actually signed any legal documents or they like forged a marriage certificate. Like what What could be going on there that could be risky? I, I wonder, because a lot of poly people do have like hand fasting ceremonies, something maybe spiritual and religious, but not legal to celebrate having, you know, the idea of a marriage without the legality of it. And because of uh, the legacy of polygamy, everywhere in the US and in many parts of the world, having a plural marriage is against the law. And, you know, a lot of people get into this argument about like, well, if we allow more than one man and one woman, like what's gonna happen next? Are people gonna start marrying helicopters? And to be honest, I don't give a fuck if somebody marries a helicopter. Like, is the helicopter gonna have visitation rights in a hospital? Like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like, I don't know. I just, I, I think it's interesting that people are like paranoid about more than one person getting married to one person. I could see how it might be 
legally complicated i could see how there might be worry about like coercion or certain groups that use plural marriage alongside like religious abuse or marrying teenagers to like old men against their will like i understand i think the mental connection that people have they think of like i don't know waco or something i guess and that's not the reality and i am hoping that maybe in like 40 years we'll see maybe the idea of plural marriage being something that people are more open to but yeah it's at the point where like even venues and wedding cake makers are potentially going to say no to something like this because it goes against their values or they don't think it's legal but it can't possibly be illegal to like have a party for three people being together at the same time right like that itself can't be illegal but maybe it's like again the legal aspect of it if they had like a marriage contract that could be invalid like i don't know exactly but <laughs> moving on from the legal speculation let us talk about societal whiplash was there a coming out period it was very interesting because you know you, you're not sure how people will take it mm -hmm. certain people took it really surprisingly well like grandparents, grandparents. were like oh, oh that doesn't, yes. that doesn't yeah. bother me I, at the time i was teaching a lot of theater classes i was teaching especially middle school mm -hmm. once or twice a week, and they would find me on instagram they'd find out that i had two partners and be like Miss and they're Cass? like oh miss cassie has a husband oh, and a wife <laughs> you have to be legal i'm like no it's not yeah. please don't get me fired you know, it was just a, a long coming out period. And at this point, people know us as a thruple, so it's kind of um, mm. gotten easier. People don't have as much shock. Sooner or later, they're going to find out. I mean, they really didn't mm. say anything. All our families are so supportive. It's like any other parent, like, you know, if you're as long as you're happy. Considering you have this YouTube channel, it's very public. What have been some of the reactions? from people online. You get good and you get yeah. bad. There has been, you know, times where we do get obviously like backlash. Religion is always brought up in comments. We just, you know, take it in, but don't let it affect us. At the end of the day, they always think that we're related, we're brothers. That's like a question that will never, never get old. ever no. get old. It's like a, day, a, a question that gets asked on a daily basis. So I have a story to share here that is related to what the first triad said which is you know i didn't have instagram in high school but there was an english teacher at my school that at one point you know he had a wife people knew that and he was telling a story about something with him and his wife but then he messed up and he said oh wait you know oh me and my girlfriend oh wait no i mean my boyfriend oh wait no i mean my wife like he repeatedly messed up like what level of relationship and then what gender of relationship he was talking about and at the time you know it kind of felt like a reverse like accidentally calling your teacher mom scenario but looking back on it i'm like was he poly like <laughs> before being an english teacher he was like in a punk rock band like he was definitely the sort of person in a younger era of his life maybe could have been poly or could have been open in some fashion if that wasn't even the label they used and i'm like you know what there are lots of people that you don't even know were poly that are poly it's maybe not as uncommon as you might think do people assume that it must be an unhealthy relationship that someone must be getting hurt yes yeah. people do they yeah. think one of us is like a prisoner in this relationship <laughs> yeah it's it's miserable syndrome. but yeah. the, the funny part is no one can agree on who they think it is. yeah uh, <laughs> one of you is hurting i don't know yeah. which one it is they're just certain that matthew is just like being used as a dildo you know <laughs> as, a <girl laughs> as a human dildo two lesbians you know it's the fe feminist agenda do people assume that it's not a serious Thing that you know uh, it's just an excuse to be promiscuous oh yeah, yeah. i definitely I think was... up until we got married oh, a lot yeah. of people Especially had that assumption beginning. even my mom when i first told her and she's like a really open-minded person when i first told her she said why are you telling me that you're having a threesome <laughs> <laughs> i'm not telling you that so telling someone that you're in a throuple means that you're talking about a threesome but when you tell someone that you are now a couple right they're not like oh why are you telling me you're having why sex you with somebody sex? why do you think it is that when you mention a relationship or have a relationship that's outside the box the first thing people think of is the sex i think it's because of porn people get their their only 
um, representation of out of the box relationships through like sexual videos. Yeah. Do you operate as any other standard two person relationship, meaning that you are fully committed to each other and each other only, or is it more along the lines of polyamory where it's, you know, you're more open? We're exclusive to one another. Mm. We're together, we have our rules, we can't do this, we cannot do that. You know, we love each other, we're all about each other. We set up our wedding, in, in none of it were we like, you're my only one, mm. we are no longer polyamorous. We were very, it was about how much we wanted to solidify our love with each other, not block out love for others. Are you guys ever gonna add a fourth person? We're not looking for one, but if, but if it comes, comes, it comes, it comes. If we find someone, it has to be a friendship, and from a friendship, it's just gonna happen and happen. Evolve. It don't. Yeah, evolve. Mm -hmm. it don't, it don't. So what you're telling me is that this could eventually be a quadruple or even a six triple at some point. Four, no, I think I four think, will be the... Yeah, <laughs> the okay, you, got, you have a ceiling. Right. Do you ever want to have a child? People ask us, so who's gonna be the father? Oh, who's gonna, who's gonna, <laughs> who's gonna be the father? The, I told them I don't want a kid, but they got me into the baby fever. Oh. Um, these two want a kid, so they're like, so like, let's they have a baby, let's have a baby, let's mm. have a baby. So he wants to have a baby, so it's like, all right, let's just have a baby. So you know what you gotta do? You gotta go to the sperm bank, you gotta say we're gonna use one cup, and then we're gonna see what happens, because whatever happens, happens. This is the strongest survive. <laughs> 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 All right, you got five seconds to shout out or promote anything you want directly into camera. Go. I'm going to be releasing a jealousy mini course with help from my lovely partners. Find that by going to integrativecouncil.org slash jealous. Go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel, the X9X26 family, guys, and follow us on Instagram and on TikTok. Please subscribe. Yes. Please subscribe to Anthony Pizzi. He's so nice. Look at him, he's, he's so cute. nice. Look he's at him, he's got a nice, nice haircut. Look at that shirt, wow. I can't stop him. Well, there you have it. I spent today with Thruples, and I feel like I've come to understand how any part of our personal lifestyle that falls outside the box of what's deemed normal will be met with some aversion simply due to ignorance. And how our feelings of jealousy are really more of an internal battle of insecurity than anything else. I, I think it's interesting. They didn't ask the married triad about kids. And I wonder like, did they ask? And that question like didn't go well. I, I wonder what happened with that. Cause I think that is a really big question because I think a lot of people, uh, especially when you add in kids with like a poly dynamic, again, they think like cult, they, they think some kind of weird religious thing is going on. But then they also kind of assume that the only reason you would have some kind of triad or something is for sexual reasons. Like the one gal said, you know, her mom assumed even being open-minded that it was a sex thing. And so it's like kind of a lose-lose. I think it's like the assumptions both ways are not particularly productive. And with kids, that is like a really big question. You know, when you are a couple and you want to share a life together, the kid question is huge because you could both want kids but be on a different timeline. You could both want kids but, you know, have infertility issues. You could both want kids but not afford it. One of you could want kids and the other one doesn't. You could both not want kids and then one of you changes their mind like three years in. Like, who knows, right? That could all be factors. And adding another person in there on top of that means there is one more party that is equally part of the relationship dynamic that could affect those outcomes. And if you are not synced up together in terms of like kids, family planning, all of that, and oh my gosh, especially with like infertility issues, if one partner that wants to have a kid has infertility issues and the other one doesn't, oh man, that can be a huge point of contention and jealousy and struggle in the relationship. And that is really, really hard to deal with. So I would have liked to have gone into that more, I think, as an aspect of it. And I think also maybe alternative ways that poly people show commitment. I think commitment gets confused with being closed and they aren't the same thing. Like I think the trad couple that got married, like they talked about not closing themselves off to other people or other love. And I think that's, 
I think that's good to show because I think people do assume, you know, even if you are poly, you settle down and you close off everything else. And that is a possibility, right? There is something called polyfidelity, which is where you have a multiple partner relationship, triad, quad, whatever, but you are closed off to adding in outside people. This is really common when you have two married couples get together and then close off the relationship. So it's just everyone who's married is involved and no one outside of that. But obviously again, not the only option. Really it is a designer relationship and you can make it be what you want it to be, but you have to be able to communicate about that. And if there is something that has contention to it, something people in the relationship don't agree on, like you have to be able to talk it out or decide, hey, we want different things and this isn't going to work. I was also really surprised as well. I don't think either Thruple had any issues with like family acceptance like it was like outside people right it was people that were maybe online perhaps on social media but like family wise everyone kind of was just like okay sounds cool when are we getting grandkids you know and I think on the one hand that's really reassuring to hear because I think anytime you want to be open and honest with your family about a relationship that you're having like if you know that's going to be upsetting, it's really hard to talk about it. Be it because, you know, you're gay, you're in a poly relationship, whatever it is, when you know there could be conflict around it, you're going to have a lot of issues being like, how do I bring this up? What do I say? When do I say it? Like, what's going to happen? You know, again, there is very little representation of poly. Very few people know what it is. Again, they think it's a sex thing. They think it's cheating with permission. They think it's manipulation. They think it's brainwashing they think it's mind control they think it's like one guy wants a harem they think it's a lesbian couple using a guy as a dildo like you know pretty uncharitable stuff and you might get lucky and have parents that think okay this is cool and fine and whatever and then you could have parents that are like we're never going to talk to you again until you're out of this relationship and when you have again three different sets of parents potentially all is a factor there two could be fine with it and the third could just go no contact and kind of weighing out that math of how parents are going to react how family is going to react can be really difficult all right uh they have decided to start weed whacking outside of my apartment uh right now for i swear every every wednesday at this time they're like you know what we're gonna weed whack and blow leaves around for four hours <laughs> every Wednesday that's the time but that being said though that is the end of the video and I hope that you all enjoyed this and found this informative again I don't really get a lot of opportunities to talk about poly and open relationships on this channel even though it is very much a part of my life if you guys do have any comments questions I would love to know what you will have to say down below and yeah I again I really enjoyed this I think Anthony did a really good job of you know, being that more neutral third party. I don't think he was as involved here as he was with the pro doms. And I kind of wonder why that might be. Maybe it's just the fact that there's not like a 10 minute demo in the middle of this, you know, something like that. But yeah, I really enjoyed this. I thought this was a good video and I'm hoping that in the future there will be more exploration of maybe different styles of polyamory or maybe talking more about people that again are like lifestyle bdsmers people that are pet players like those other things as well i want to keep seeing and i think anthony overall tends to do a really good job in that department but yeah that is everything i have to share today so if you guys want to make sure to not miss any other videos from me if you have not already please do subscribe i make videos twice a week about all sorts of kink and bdsm related topics and sometimes things about poly like this video here and if you do want to support my work if you want to help me make more videos like this one you can go over to my patreon a link to that will be down below if you do already support me over there thank you so so much it means the absolute world to me and until i see you all next time i hope you have a great rest of your day and a great rest of your week Bye bye